we are. Hey, 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 everyone. Hello, Steve. How are you doing? I'm good. It's been, I've been, I've been on camera a lot today. I had to record a talk, like a backup talk for a talk. Like you got to do it twice today. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm familiar. We, we chatted about this earlier, right? They're like, Hey, you've been accepted to the CFP, but because it's remote, we're going to make you do twice the amount of work. Yeah. That was, that was one of those. And whereas if you just did it live, you'd go, Oh, well, it wasn't perfect. It's done now, but because you can record it, if it's even slightly wrong, you're like, oh, I could do it better. And then you do it again, right? And you're like, uh, right. But anyway, so I got one of those out of the way. And then I did my normal Friday show today at three. And so I've just been talking to this device for most of my day. Well, if if you lose your voice halfway through, then uh, then we know why. Um, to everyone else, hello. And once again, welcome to another episode of Codified Security. Uh, by Bridge Crew, where we talk about Chekhov, your all of Bridge Crew's open source, DevSecOps, and you know infrastructure as code security in general. Um, I'm Matt Johnson. I'm a developer advocate with Bridge Crew, and it's, you never get the direction right, do you? When you're trying to guess. No. I'm Steve Jaguar. Oh, there we go. Awesome. He's he's there he's are. there for me, but he might be there the for you. Guy. Who knows? Wait there, yeah, <laughs> and that's Chewbacca. Chewbacca has gone and joined Anonymous. I see it's uh, it's an interesting look. He thinks he can't be recognized. <laughs> He's going through seven proxies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so uh, do do you want to talk about the week? Like sometimes we talk about exciting things. I have something I'd like to show you and see what you think. Yeah, really. let's let's talk about the week in review in terms of exciting security things, and then we'll get on to the stupid and misinformed mm. decision for what we've decided to try and do live on today's Whoa. show. Ah, so ah, ah. hold on for uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before then, I am because we are infrastructure as code security enthusiasts. I would like your take on this. So Ooh. this is the addition of the ability for Kubernetes to mutate resources using OPA, OPA and Gatekeeper. Because I don't know if how familiar you are with Kyverno. Kyverno wasn't just validating with its rules. It had the ability to mutate. Re regex so that, based effectively, right? And, it, and, and that was a differentiator between Kyverno's rules-based system for Kubernetes versus OPA. So now OPA can do it too. Uh, and there's a couple examples in here. Now there's a lot of just text, but they talk about the ability to auto-assign metadata. I don't have a problem too much with that, right? It's it's still a change. And then there's like changing fields. Now, for anybody watching, and you might have your own example, um, metadata, an example of maybe a practical version of metadata would be the annotations for a service mesh like Linker D or Istio. You need to add something to your deployment. Uh, like in Linker D, there's like a Linker D that slash inject, and you can pipe it through and then presto, you get your you get your sidecars. So maybe, you know, that's a that's a that's a version of that. But the version they've got for this, all fields, is way down at the bottom. Oh, oh, still going. The remediation of the privileged true and a, a mod that deploys it as false. Mm. And then and then presto, your engine X is created, which is actually almost a good lead into what we're gonna talk about today. I, I assume what? that was accidental, but it certainly is. <laughs> um what do you think about what do you think about emission controllers changing your deployment spec and mm. then going, it's all good. Mm. Created. And you've, you know, for for people watching this, you know, we have not done like the pre-show, this is what I'm going to talk about thing. You are literally putting me on the spot here. Um, Where's that bus? I, I hate that idea. Um, <laughs> For a very, very simple reason. Everything we are trying to do is get to a point where we have a recorded, traceable, drift detectionable source of truth with a history, i.e. 
Git and GitOps and all of that good stuff. Like our, our very selves have a drift detection blog where we're using tools like your and tagging to be able to say, hey, this thing, since it has gone from your code into a real object in Kubernetes or a cloud provider object has changed its configuration. And that's probably not good because it means someone's logged in and manually changed it. So having your admission controllers kind of hackily do that change is almost like someone hacking a bash script in your CI pipeline to do that change. Both of them never ever get like put back into Git. Both of them are never tracked for what is changing. Like that's A, going to cause drift detection to show up all kinds of like false positives. And B, is just really nasty. Because what if you move from that product to another product and know that, oh, well, our code was previously secure and then the other product doesn't do those annotations and suddenly, oh God, no, that's horrible. That's that's right. so like anti-pattern for single source yes. of truth and GitOps. Ding, that's ding, nasty. Ding, ding, ding. All right, we're in complete agreement about that. And it sounds like you need to calm down. What beer do you have? Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie me. Um, I, I, I up. have a Vermont Sessions, which is a Brewdog, a Brewdog and Northern Monk collab. It is a 5.2 on the strength meter, which uh, feels about right for a live presentation where I'm actually going to have to write some YAML by the sounds of it. What about yourself? Uh, well, because inspired by many of our guests who are always in the wrong time zone, I can say, hey, it's just coffee, friends. <laughs> of course it, it Mike, happens. Mike, we're thinking of you when we say that. <laughs> it's a 5.6. Oh, uh, okay. Coffee, coffee brown ale. Never had it before. So it's from Chicago. Maybe, maybe hope, this, maybe pizza. this part of the podcast should like go simulcast live with your beer podcast, and we do like a quick thirty second review. Mm. I'm gonna say this one tastes like beer. Yeah, it's beer. All right, success. You should be a guest on my show. This, <laughs> Cheers. Oh, this smells weird. I don't have a. Oh, I do have a glass. So Glasses are optional. It's full of water. Who needs water? Uh, this this tasted like a brown ale. It looks like a little bit like, um, you know, when you're a kid. Well, maybe you didn't do this in the UK, but in Canada, we used to get, we used to think we were quite clever by getting Coca-Cola and then mixing it with Sprite or lemonade. And then you get this kind of murky, oh, interesting. off brown dirge color that's what it is but it's actually not bad it's pretty hoppy for a brown okay not is... like newcastle brown meets ipa love child this is this isn't cashing the checks that its smell is writing ah. would be my <laughs> would be my first take it's a little light on mouthfeel like it's drinkable, mm -hmm. but it's just not maybe because of the ABV, but like it's just a bit thin. Um, ah, funny you said that. I, I I'm asked if you'd had the so you're Matt's making his way through the brew dog collabs. And so the cloud water one solves the problem that that one creates. Right. Yeah. It's it's got a bit more way thickness better. to it. Yeah, yeah 100 percent better. All right. We've Let got a us... beer review. We've got a beer review. Um, I've calmed down from that horrible idea of, <laughs> of mutating manifests. Um, uh, yeah. Our, without further you get, ado. You get your seatbelt fastened. You get your IDEs prepped. Shall we, first of all, introduce what you are about to unleash and why? Yeah. All right. So uh, a blog was released today, and the blog was a... Uh, manifested from actually my previous show where I was creating a website. Uh, it was going to be running K3S. It runs actually just no here, here on my pies. And it has a deployment and I put it in GitHub. And then of course, obviously it occurs to me that, well, hold up. Well, I work for a infrastructure as code security company. My deployment has to be the best and it has to be, has to 
tick all the right security boxes. So I went and I downloaded, I went searching for the solution, didn't really find it. It's all there in the blog. And I just went to the default that you can actually get from the Kubernetes.io has a very good, here's Nginx, here's what a deployment looks like, here's what a service looks like, put that together. And then I scanned it with Chekhov. And I, then I went through the, the actual experience of solving all of the Chekhov rules so that I got a clean Chekhov bill of health uh, which is good. That's the blog, right? But in my kind of travels in creating the blog, I noticed there was something in my manifest I had added that I thought, hey, we didn't have a check for that. We should have a check for that. I'm going to trick Matt into creating a check for that live on an office hours. And I pinged you and you're like, yeah, no problem. I don't know. Maybe you'd been drinking that day because you agreed rather quickly. And I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you what I want you to do now. Oh, is this ready? where I get? To, is this where I get to find out what we're writing? Let me find out. So this okay. is so this is the blog, creating a secure nginx deployment, and it, it basically kind of it's almost like a little journey, right? Showing you where I started with. Okay. You know, all the things I had fixed. Ah, am I gonna need to end. read? Am I gonna need to read that no. to get the context? Okay. No, no, no. Cool. No, no. Ignore it. Should everyone else read this to get the context? Everyone else. Everyone else should yes. read this blog. There we go. Security for basic deployment. I mean, Chekhov's great for scanning, but it's there's a lot of why in there. Like, why are all our rules? Why are they important? I actually go into a lot of detail on it. Hence, the thing had a very long scroll bar. So the one I'm talking about, all of this, uh, all of the good things are checked. Uh, default namespaces, security context, it's all there. All our checks are good. The okay. one specific is if you can see here, because I'm running a web server, I have replicas too. Right. Okay. You know okay. Yep. You and want because yep. I have, and you can cast right load, load balancer and all that good stuff. Yeah. I have a anti affinity to make sure because I've got four pies or three that are 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 nodes. Okay. That yep. I want to make sure that my two replicas show up on different nodes. Sure. Yeah. In case and a node crashes or sure. Yeah. It's about. It's. Some might argue. Oh, it's not. It's not security, but availability and resilience is security. Is security, so this, right. This is making sure that if something goes down, I already have another one up, not just two, but on two different nodes. So this okay. is a very simple check that I added in here. And then I went looking at our rules, and I thought, we don't have one. Let's do it. Huh. So here's the, here's the challenge. It's pretty simple. I'm not going to ask you to check to make sure that the labels are the same. That's going over the top, unless you really want to. But if replicas is greater than one, or is present at all, essentially. Okay. Then present and greater than one, check to see that there's an anti-affinity there. And that's it. Because I think that's probably enough to, to imply that somebody knows what they're doing. Okay. Fair? That's a pretty Shh. simple one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. You've not thrown me under a bus as, as, not, as much not, as I, I maybe thought. Um, yeah, not too hard under the bus. But for people watching, this is a great way if they find the same problem I found to go, well, how can I fix the problem? How can I fix it for myself first? But then how can I contribute it back to Chekhov? Cool. Okay. So um, I'm going I'm to do this. And that's big. I'm going to do this. And then I'm sure. going to zing this over to you on Slack. I'm, I'm, I'm clearly doing that thing where I'm not very good at thinking and talking at the same time. Um, are you, are you sending me the manifest? Because that's the first thing I'm going to need to have a look you at. You have it. it should okay, be in, Slack. in my Slack? In your Slack. Let's in your Slack. have a look have where I am on codified security Slack. Let me switch. Oh, no. I sent you on. <laughs> that's fine. Well, our, I, our, I, got our, I got it. Our personal Slack. Personal Slack. So By the way, should does, be able does to... anyone else get really, really annoyed that you can't just have one view of all your threads from all your different Slacks like in one place? That's a... That's a startup, right? So there. it's a multi-million dollar startup right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I am going to share my screen now so that we are live, live from the very offset. Well, I think Peyton might have been censored. Peyton was trying to share the blog. I'm going to do that. Just in case. Because sometimes Peyton is our producer, let's say, and back behind the scenes, behind the curtain genius. She just went to put the blog out, but because she's may have been censored because Twitch does that. 
she they they think she's a, a bot she's you're not just, you're just so power hungry steve you know you just you know we we, we give you control yeah. over the <laughs> i'm not it's not me that blocks links it's just when someone shows up and just whacks a link in right away i think twitch does has its own security cool Okay, do you want to bring the screen up and I will not touch right. anything until until it's no, shared no. so that all of my failings will be visible for everyone to have a jolly good chuckle about. Uh, okay, you are you're out there now. Awesome. Ready. Okay, so that, I'm going to the clean slate. I'm going to very quickly just explain what I've got here because you told me we were writing a Kubernetes check. Mm -hmm. So I have um the smallest like sample repo that has uh some terraform in it um and that's what's by default in the oh there we go that's what's by default in in here and all i've done is i've created a custom checks directory which can be called anything um and as long as you create a blank init.py in there as per Chekhov documentation you can then point to that directory as a use custom checks from this directory so it means instead of having to clone Chekhov or like contribute to Chekhov immediately you can write your own custom checks that may be specifically for your uh particular use case or application and test them really easily um by just having a folder uh, directory with a, a blank in it.py. And then at that point, if you run Chekhov with um, something like this, so scan this directory using this external checks DIR, um, which is obviously this, and obviously we care about the, the Kubernetes framework, um, that will pull any Python checks from that directory um, into, into running with Chekhov. So obviously... Done. There's nothing at the moment because yeah. I haven't pasted your Slack message. So let me take this. Well, there's no deployable. There's also no rules in there right now, is there? There's no rules, but it would. But that will also run against the built-in Chekhov rules for this Chekhov version. So, ah. um, for example, if I dropped the framework Kubernetes, um, it would pick up the fact that there's already some insecure Terraform in this sample repo, and we'd not only get our custom checks, but we'd also get all the Terraform oh, stuff as well. Of course, but, of course, of course. But because we don't want to scroll through that output while we're debugging a, a Kubernetes check, let's just say, hey, I only want Chekhov to scan the Kubernetes framework for now. All right. I'm just going to check my blog because I pasted my, my Chekhov output into it. And I'm curious. I think I did anyway. Let's get edited out. Um, it did get it out. I thought I was going to say what version of Kubernetes that I actually used, just in case I'm going to find out that you have one newer. And there's a, <laughs> and, and there's a new rule that is going to mean I don't have a clean slate, but I'll find out on the fly. Cool. So I have pasted your sample, and I'm going to save that as... Um, I don't want it in the checks directory. I just want it here and we'll save that what is it a deployment yeah it's a deployment just call it deployment yaml yeah I'll call it deployment.yaml there we go okay uh right so so you are saying that if we have a replica here of more than one mm -hmm. we need this section yeah but more strictly defined as pod anti-affinity pod anti-affinity okay yeah. so i'm gonna create it really annoys me that there is no duplicate by the way in vs code i might actually pr that myself like why do i have to copy and paste when yeah there should be just a duplicate button um i'm gonna create a deployment to dot yaml then in that case mm -hmm. uh yep yeah. and i am gonna have the same thing You can just delete affinity as well. Yeah, without Those that. Is, is that yeah. fair so that we have two and it's easy to see which one's passing and which well, one's that, failing? Yeah, that should be a failure. So yeah. OK. So if we run this now with no custom checks, we should see it scanning the Kubernetes manifest. Mm. 
That's interesting. Didn't say it did any checks. That's weird. Uh... Can you tell we're live, Steve? Yeah, yeah, of course. Nothing's going to work. Do you, have a, do you by any chance have a default? I did this almost earlier when I was recording. Uh, check off config? I had a check off config and I, no, and I was doing not, something weird. Not, not at all. Uh, that's so strange. Just do a dash are, F and, and grab the file directly. That's are what these, I was doing. Are these, was... are these actually valid or do we have some like syntax errors here? Dude. I did send you the one from the blog and not I, from the you know what I, you know what I mean like yeah 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 I I cut it out of the blog which means it could be garbage. I'm not sure I like that if I if I can't get it to if I can't get it to give me some errors in the either this or it's so perfect there are just no failed checks but it should still show us the past checks. It should show um, you the past checks. Yes, it really Do a dash F. should. Let's have a look. You're making me crazy. Ooh, let's run all the frameworks. We are seeing AWS stuff, AWS stuff. All right, I'm gonna re. I'm gonna slack you on the actual file. Cool. That's oh, probably... that that was that was okay. Yeah, just think like before no, we the one like... that runs actually in my cluster. Like... Right before we jump into like linting and and all that stuff, let's just make sure we have one that's not oh yeah, been, yeah like yeah. Blo make sure we have one that's not been like blogified into like fake um yeah terminal yeah, language you got it cool yeah and that's that should be in two seconds with you i am gonna do well, both of those uh so yeah it, that is in your slack now so now you don't have to work any magic you're right because who knows the indenting could be all wrong right you know, yeah you know what i was like right that's that's cool. Right. Okay, that was I'm... remiss of me to paste it to you that way. No, no worries at all. I am all just right. gonna paste this one in here for now. Save that. Same command. Did you did you get that from the one I just sent you then? Yeah. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. I so we have ensure that service token accounts are only mounted when necessary. We have all kinds of stuff here yeah that's what i expected to see and a load of past checks as well a load of past checks as well look at that oh it's service account i removed that i made the c i made this not as good let me get it back <laughs> the, the service kit one is there uh, let me explain let me explain i had to do a demonstration of linkerd and in order for linkerd to run i had to allow the server service account to be mounted so i actually changed it slightly oh, i'm shooting myself in the foot here hey it's good it's uh it's a working deployment right we we can see some output we can see good checks and bad checks yeah it works you can you can you can still solve the problem with the check even though i can can send you the one that solves the other problem in like a second so okay. i would say That's cool. start writing the new one Start writing the new one. Okay, I'm going to leave deployment. Uh, do you know what? Now I'm going to copy and paste that, and I'm going to remove the... I'm going to remove the anti-affinity section. Okay, cool. So how we write a check. Um, for anyone that's never written a checkoff check before, a Python checkoff check, I start every single one of them the same way, which is shamelessly going and looking at the thousands of checks already in the Chekhov code base. So what I'm going to do here is go over to Chrome. And because I knew I was writing a Chekhov Kubernetes check, we are in the directory Chekhov, Chekhov Kubernetes checks. And here you'll see a Python file for every existing Kubernetes check built into Chekhov. And whether they're in check of themselves or whether they are in the external checks directory of your repo, they are exactly the same. So we can copy and paste one of these into our external checks directory and start building on it. So all we need to do is find one that is going to give us the easiest path to doing what 
Steve has asked us to do. So I'm going to have a quick look at a couple of these. Like, what is this one doing? Like, uh... okay. Scan spec. So this is just getting uh, the resource ID, which allows us to print pretty output based on which resource is responsible for triggering this check, just as a explanation talking out loud while we're going through an existing Kubernetes checkoff check. This is the actual thing doing the checking because you can see it has the check result dot failed or check result dot passed. Um, if pr allow privilege escalation in security context, if com security context allow privilege escalation. Okay, so yeah, so we're checking that within conf, there is a section, and by the way, conf is just the entire, in the Kubernetes case, conf is just the entire, um, effectively, um, JSON or YAML. So within conf, we're looking for security context in conf, and the reason we're doing that in an if um, is because if we if there isn't a security context in conf and we try and get conf security context, we're just going to not have like that's not going to exist, so it's going to bomb out. Um, yeah, let's okay. let's let's take that one. So we're gonna have a whack load of nested ifs. We're just yeah. The, fur the further right. the deeper it goes. Right. Okay. Than... Yeah. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm not. I'm not saying it's going to be the nicest way of doing it, but this <laughs> this is what I'm thinking should work. Right. It'll work. Yeah. Um, I think this will work. Yeah. Like if. That. Hold on. Hang on. I need my. Actually, I'm going to do you a favor while you're doing this. Yeah. Let's have a look. Like if if spec in conf if. Spec in conf spec if affinity in conf spec affinity if pod anti affinity in yeah and then only if replicas is more than one yeah this should work this should work okay all right I just looked Matt I just looked something up for you the last number in our Kubernetes is one five one so you can call this one one five two if you want oh sweet. Okay. Yeah. I was I was gonna I was actually gonna be really lazy on that. Um I just did a check off dash L and it goes up to one five one. So now I can I can So what Steve is talking about, and I'm just gonna save this immediately as one dot pi so we get the nice color and things. Um what Steve's talking about is the checkoff checks obviously all have an ID like CKV AWS hundred or CKV Kate's twenty. Um, if you were to commit this back to Chekhov, you would need to make sure this is linear and you're not overwriting anyone. I mean, we do actually in our CICD pipeline make sure you don't, but uh, as a PR. But yeah, so Steve's basically saying the the, the next free check is what? Sorry, one five two, one five two. But at the same time, if you are writing tests, and we'll come back to that, but I could call this, you know, Matt or enterprise like custom one anything works and you can then use that to run that check specifically on the on the uh, cli so this check is going to be um what was it a deployment it deployments or replica sets oh or Last replica case. sets or replica okay. sets Sa same structure it doesn't really matter so uh, that was going to be my next question is the like exactly the same like there's no yeah. extra like indentation for spec or anything like that i, I feel confident i can say yeah you're gonna okay. get away with the same code for both cool deployments and replica sets um something Great. like that yeah cool. So, uh, uh, so this in Chekhov in the inner, and you can see we're extending a base Kubernetes check. Um, so the only thing we really need to change is the name, the ID, the types of Kubernetes objects we want to scan. So deployments and replica sets. Check category is Kubernetes. That stays the same. 
Uh, the only other thing we need to change is obviously give it a class name that doesn't conflict. We've copied and pasted this from an existing check. So let's mm. call this um, require replica sets. Uh, sorry, require affinity is hard to write. All right, cool. Let's just call it require anti affinity. There we go. And then down at the bottom, we actually create an instance of this in every check. You'll see that across pretty much every uh, check file. So let's change that to our class name because that's necessary. And then that's basically the boilerplate needed for a Kubernetes check. The only thing that then matters is your check's business logic in this bit. So at this point, what we really need is this open split, right? There we go. Um, and we should be able to very quickly now get on with this. He says, setting an unnecessary breakpoint. Okay, no. so if... I mean, there's always going to be a spec, right? Do we need to? Do we need to if that? But for cleanliness, maybe it's up to okay. you. Okay, yeah. If well, for time for timeliness, you can skip it. If spec in conf. No, let's yeah, let's do it. If spec in conf. Um. If. Where are we? Replicas in comp spec. Yep. And then this is effectively going to be the same, but accessing that thing. So if. So now you can assume replicas is there. Spec replicas. What? Greater than one. Mm -hmm. And we're going to want to. Not do anything at this point because at, at this point we want to trigger some logic right at this point we want to go and that, so we, we we're here so we know we need to do something because we have more than one replica because less than one replica affinity just doesn't matter um or or you start with less than two and ignore the rule maybe you do that first i don't know say it again well, instead of going greater than one, you you check for the other version first and say, if there's, if there's less than two, then oh, so we're doing less code, or yeah, or okay, if or if there's no replicas, then we don't have to run any of the logic because it doesn't matter. I don't know. I mean, yeah, this, okay, we're 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 discussing uh, logic that doesn't really matter as long as it works. Yeah, that makes sense. So I I, I get what you're saying. Um, so like if this is like less than the like the number where affinity rules actually matter. Um, we could just immediately return check result dot past because yeah, we don't care because there's no point checking or doing any more computation. Ah, good. That was the autocomplete. That was very handy. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, oh, by the way, I I should say as well the reason this is all working nice and nice and nice is I am in a Virtual env. Um, I've told VS Code which my uh, pip env is, and in that pip env, I have already installed pip install checkoff, which has got all the dependencies and everything. And because of that, when we're like, I, obviously we copied and pasted this, but you can see it's actually pulling individual components from within checkoff, which is why VS Code is allowing me to like um, yeah. Auto complete these these sections within Chekhov and things like that. So cool. that's working. That was, that's working pretty that, well. That was handy. Yeah, I was like, oh, magic! Look. Mm. Okay, so this is like the meat of it, isn't it? Now, so we now need to <laughs> not screw up a thousand not... nested ifs. Right. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> the the next bit we care about is. Let's have a look. We've already checked that specs in conf. We now need another spec. So it's spec spec, because that's not confusing Kubernetes writers at all. Uh, <laughs> if spec 
in comp spec, so that'd be spec spec. And then if affinity in, is that right? If affinity in... Uh, have you handled template or did I miss that? Oh yeah, you're completely right. I I didn't follow my lines. Thanks for that. Yeah, spec template. Yeah, spec, spec template spec. Great. So if template in comp spec, if spec, spec in, comp. in comp template spec. Jeez. If spec in comp template, you're right. This is going to be a lot of nested ifs, isn't it? <laughs> and then what if affinity in yeah jeez in comp spec template spec but you write it once and then it will just work hopefully maybe yeah. uh, hopefully maybe I feel like we're in that monty python spam <laughs> sketch where they're just going spec 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 <laughs> <laughs> spam spec 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 in yaml 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 all of the yaml um okay so at this point we have affinity okay so this is the this is the good bit right so we can now say if uh affinity in spec template spec Affinity, which we know exists. Um, and that's all you wanted me to check on, right? Whether we had a pod anti-affinity rule. I think so. Okay, so before we add any more stuff, like if we have that, we can return past. Else. Oh my gosh. Now we got all of the else. Check result dot failed. All right, so that's if and then, we're probably gonna need a bunch of failed. We uh, probably are, but like in my mind, what have we got? If spec in conf, yeah. Uh, if replicas in spec, like if we don't have replicas, we pass because there's no replicas to worry about the anti affinity on. If we don't have Spec in the first place, and I'm I'm not sure we have valid Kubernetes manifests, but yeah. that should be the same. Um, yeah. yeah, the calls are relevant then, so that's it's fine. Irrelevant, so that <laughs> he says having to run this live. Maybe the, maybe the success case works, but the failure cases may not work. But who cares? Okay, let's give this a try, shall we? Let's like I am feeling not at all confident that that should do something that gets us towards a valid check. How are you feeling? So we have deployment one that has... Uh, I, I think it's just going to crash. But... Pod anti-affinity. And we have deployment two that has no anti-affinity. Sod it. Let's give it a try. All right. Save, save, Big bang save. testing. Big bang testing. Boom. So if it doesn't work, what happens? Either nothing like that. Mm. What, did, did it, what happened? Do it so that it only runs the check you want. Do yeah. Dash, also, dash check. also I, ah, so it skipped it, I think, because this isn't like this is giving me. Oh, oh that's from my previous copy and pasted nonsense. Oh, you've got some random Python down there. Yeah, it was bad Python. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's try that. I think it looks like it still skipped it. So hmm, let's see what we've got. Do you know what? I'm gonna. Um, it's not brief, sent, is it? What's is I sent, it? I sent you a line to get rid of that one thing that fails, but the um, I would do the dash dash check. And I would call it up by name. I was actually just going to go while we're here. Oh, I, I could just specify the check, couldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Just call dash dash check. Give it the name. Yep. Yep. Fair enough. And then it'll only run that one. And then you're like, dash dash check. About 
CKV Mac Custom One. Awesome. Hmm. Doesn't like you. It doesn't like my check. It doesn't like, where is my check? Oh, it's because my check isn't in my custom checks folder. That would help. Sometimes the basics. There we go. Let's give that a try. Yeah, I thought that was weird that it was just like ignoring you. Did it again. It did it again. Why has it done it again? Check off custom checks. You can tell we're live. Jesus. Uh, check off custom checks. Framework Kubernetes. Get rid of that check and see what happens. It is still ignoring my checks, isn't it? Uh, what number did you say? Oh, 152. If you want to go with that one. Oh, okay. 152. Oh, look. I've just realized wait, wait, wait. what I've I've just realized what I've done. I think you I think you realize the same as me. Why what are you I've do? just realized what I've done. There is no plural on and those. there's not and then needs capitals. API endpoints. I mean, I don't think Chekhov does, but I definitely know it's not plurals. Let's give that a oh, try. Yeah. I, all right, you let me know because I because if it's a comparing with the kind oh, field, maybe. kind kind needs kind capital. is well, deployment, kind. yeah. And Let's it's capitalized. That. It's that's yeah. more what I expect to see because it's yeah. it's yeah. Right, the failure, the complete failure of it. But at least it, it's absorbing it, which is that's good. good though. Like okay, so now it's reading our check in. So it was completely ignoring our check because the Kubernetes manifest it found was not at all matching the types of Kubernetes objects we had. So that'd be ex a, a spelling mistake there is just like me saying, I want a service there instead yeah. of anything else. And obviously it's not going to match on those because there's there's nothing for it to match on. Uh, although oh. we do have a service down there, so you that's do, do not a, not yeah, a good yeah. example. But you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> if yeah, uh, I don't point. know, but, um, <laughs> leave it anyway. We get it. <laughs> just for completeness, <laughs> something that doesn't even exist anymore. There we go. Pod security policy. There we right. go. So it's good it's point. ignoring this uh, because it wasn't the right name. So deployment and replica set. No S's has to be capitalized. There we go. Matching right. whatever you have in your kind. Well done, Steve. Um, it wouldn't be as fun that. if this worked first time, would it? Let's I, be honest. I I can already see another error. Cool. I Actually, think I I, th I think I saw the error from the previous one as well. But just showing that you can specify just the the individual check as well. That should still bomb out now because we're specifying. Yeah, just so we don't get anything else first. We just get the error, which yeah. is a really easy way of debugging. Because if you've called it something custom, you can just debug that specific issue. So. There we go. Uh, let's have a look what's going on. Uh, conf parent, conf name, conf get name, else conf parent. Uh, let's have a look. Key error parent. Oh, interesting. Have I messed up a... I think your get resource ID. I think, yeah, I left. Ah, yeah. So I said, ignore this because this is just how we get the name of our item. But it's correctly pointing us to the line to do the debugging on. And yeah, I completely left that alone, got straight into my business logic and completely forgot to check whether this actually worked. So in our oh, case, we'd want, we'd want kind of conf metadata name wouldn't we yeah you want to get your deployment uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so if conf get well you don't have a parent that's we don't have a parent no so return if i mean that's a weird way of putting it 
Uh, okay, so this is basically saying we think we should have this, uh, but if not, default to this. In our case, we don't care about that, no. so we'll just What's say it? we'll just say return com uh, conf metadata kind dash conf metadata name. Yeah, that's gonna be there. Yeah, like you said before, uh, or it's not a correct. Or get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah, or it's not a manifest, right? It's not a deployment at all. And yeah, that cannot go away. So we get deployment dash name, which will do for us. And let's try that again. And yeah, you get bigger problems if uh, that doesn't work. Ah. Ah, uh, yeah, that's not in metadata. That's just no. root. <laughs> There you cool. go. I'm kind to meditate him. Yeah, that should work. Okay. Okay. Is it something? Is it happy with that? Is that what that means? I have, I have no idea. No, we, we should have a pass or a fail check. So it's still not it's still not reading that check in properly, is it? What have we done here? Let's have a look. Require anti affinity. Check equals require. Uh, I think I know what the problem is. Sure, go for it. All right. So when you don't put an else, it doesn't give you a fail or a pass. So you don't get a result. And we didn't do all the else's. But I see a problem right there. The second if. I'm uh, sorry, the second if. That's stupid. The last if. Okay. That should say pod anti affinity. You've got if affinity twice. Oh. Oh, you're a hundred percent right. So yeah, uh, and we spec, don't have an else there. Spec template spec affinity. We should be checking if pod anti affinity. Yeah, which is actually the key one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're quite right. There we go. If pod anti affinity in comp spec, and then so if that's the one that bond, it's because yeah, we and don't have we, else. We don't, and we don't yeah. have else. So it. Didn't know it just gave us like a null value, yeah. and it didn't exist. All right, that's for folks watching. If you don't get all your else's in place, it might yep. look like it's ignoring your rule altogether. If else, and then if else, because if we don't have an affinity section, we can't have a that's a fail anti affinity section, so that's a fail as well. Uh, why is that not being nice to me? There we go. You got most of that. You want to just like bite the bullet and try again? Oh, why is it squiggly? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, put onto affinity and blah, 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 blah. Is there else? I, in let's leave. Oh, maybe it's one. Yeah, hang on. Apps versus spaces, huh? One more. Why is it not aligning to that there we go um oh my goodness okay <laughs> w whatever <laughs> whatever Just like keep, keep going until it gets rid of the yeah, squiggle that'll do um okay so we've got match 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 oh we've nothing there if spec spec template um okay, let's try it again we need another one there don't we because if that doesn't exist, there can't be an anti-infinity and there can't be a anti-infinity rule. So that's also a fail. Yeah, that's a Kubernetes level fail, but yeah, good data. And then pass, pass, pass. Yeah, okay, let's give that a try. All right. oh, Sweet. Was... Uh, see pass or fail. Oh, Ooh, let's put okay. our check name back, shall we? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. But we don't see everything else. Ah, Ooh, look at this. Here we go. Deployments and replica sets must have anti infinity rules for replicas above one. And that's failing on deployment two, which is the one that should fail. And we passed. You did. And we passed on deployment. Sweet. There oh. we go. What what time is that? It, 40 minutes or so. Like, Bit embarrassing, but we got there I in the end. It, I think anyone under the pressure of 
live would not be at their maximum. This is this is reminding me very much of the raw code episode where he did the um, capture the flag for the yeah. Kubernetes thing from uh, from KubeCon yeah. uh, EU. Yeah, from Andy Control Plane, and he just like he did that. And he went, "All right, give me a hint." <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so let's let's take a quick look at that. Like, hopefully, that's helped people that have not written checks for. Well, ever. Um, hopefully, in, in the fact yeah. that we kind of struggled through that, you can see why we're doing this first, as, as Steve pointed out right at the beginning. I kind of feel you've been practicing there, dude. I feel I feel you you came up with that solution far too quickly because... Because I did um, a mock exam last we're, night for the we're CK. Not, <laughs> we're not having to run all of this code and this ifs if we can just bomb out straight away with a pass there because if we don't care, we don't care. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that works. That's good. So what that would I do really next? Well. Now so, that I say this is a done deal, I've tested it thoroughly like this. Mm -hmm. What's my next step to contribute it back? To contribute it back to Chekhov. So obviously, see. if it is something that is very sensitive or is something that you want to keep directly within your um, own repos, there's nothing wrong with having like a check of custom checks directory like we've got here. You can have all of your custom checks. You could even call them like, you know, your business or team name. And you could tell your check of in your CI CD pipeline to look for that directory and run those. That's a completely valid strategy for using custom checks in check of. But if you are a nice open source citizen and you would like everyone's check of to um, you know, have these new checks or they're more generic, like the one we've written here and not specific team or business logic, like tagging, for example. Um, yeah, committing this back to Chekhov once you have it working is actually really simple. Um, as I said, they work the same in or out of Chekhov. So you would take your working check, you would go over to Chekhov, um, and I should I should probably explain what's going on here. I have git clone Chekhov from Bridge.io Chekhov. I have checked out uh, Origin Master, and I have git switched to a new branch. And if we look at that new branch, yeah, working tree clean. And if I do a git log, we're, we're at exactly the same point as the latest um, master release of Chekhov. So nothing's changed at this point. And all we do is go through the tree to find where the other Kubernetes checks are. So we'd go check of, check of, Kubernetes checks, exactly where I stole an example from earlier to give us a, a head start for writing our custom check. And what we could effectively do is create a new file in here, call it, what do we want to call it, Steve? What did we call it in the other terminal? Require anti-affinity. Let's call it that. Mm, that sounds nice. Pretty good. That'll do. New file. Hi. We would paste that in. We would see what the latest Kubernetes, um, latest Kubernetes check was. Um, and the easiest way to do that, obviously, Steve gave it to us earlier, but the easiest way to do that would be just find somewhere I've got Chekhov. Chekhov dash dash list. And then this is going to output like all the checks. So you could, if you know you're writing a, a Kate's check, you could very easily just like grab for Kate's. And you could, you know, quickly find out what the latest check is. So what did you say the latest check was, Steve? It says 151. So you're 152. One, five, two. Great. Yeah. So that's fantastic. And then, so we'll call this CKV. Wow, my laptop is struggling. Kate's one, five, two. deployment and replica set. We know that's all working well. Um, and that effectively as a PR um, is valid, but we would ask for a test. And so every check that goes into Chekhov also has a relevant test um, just so that we can make sure that everything is looking good. 
So if we go out of checks and go into our tests, da, 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 I'm in the wrong place. Tests down here, you'll find a similar uh, file system layout. So Kubernetes, checks. And then each one of these has a directory with example YAMLs. So just like we had the example YAMLs we were testing against locally, like deployment one or deployment two, for example, you would put some example YAMLs in here. Um, one that's meant to fail, one that's meant to pass. Let's say you have multiple fail and passing scenarios. You can have as many here as you want. And then you would have a relevant test with the same name as your check. And again, you can copy one of these just like you copied the um, original check to get you started. And what you're basically doing is you're pulling in the sample directory of whatever your example YAMLs are. And if you have two failed and one passed in there, you're asserting that two failed and one passed. Um, and that just guarantees that there's going to be no regressions or people aren't going to tweak that check without it doing the thing that it's meant to do. And obviously our PR submissions and our um, release pipeline will run all these checks. Um, so it just guarantees that we're, we're making sure the tests continue to do what the authors thought they were meant to do. Um, so I'm going to put that back on you, Steve. You can... If I raise a PR for this, you can uh, you can write a test for it. No worries. That's cool. Awesome. So yeah, we'd we'd give it the correct name. We'd check that it works. Um, and in terms of checking that it works, slightly different than just running Chekhov because suddenly you're not just giving it a custom checks directory. You're actually part of Chekhov. And if you pip install Chekhov or brew install Chekhov, it's just going to run the real Chekhov you installed rather than running the version that you've got checked out as code um, because it's not packaged as a Python module at this point. You've just checked it out from GitHub. So you can then have something like this in your VS Code launch configuration. You only need one of them. Um, so for example, here, Chekhov, um, let's have a look. Type Python launch. And what we're doing is instead of running Chekhov, we're saying, you know, directly execute main.py, which mm -hmm. gets us to running the version of Chekhov we have checked out here, and then passing the orgs to it directly. So I'm running dash D against a directory called test DIR. Um, and then I'm also passing the Python path of the current workspace so that it actually finds our Chekhov module and main when, because main is going to immediately try and go, I need to load all these other things. You don't want it loading modules from a version of Chekhov. You might have pip installed globally. You want it to use your locally checked out version of Chekhov. So that's Matt's top tip, just one of those hey. for, and I will, um, I'll even, I'll even go one further. Do you know what? I will, there we go, delete a load of these. Leave that as a working launch.json. I don't think I actually need that at the end then if there's one of them. Um, and I'm going to paste that to you, Steve, so that we can put that in the show notes or we can paste that directly now into the live stream or something like that. Um, okay. But yeah, that's a working VS Code launch.json for a checked out version of Chekhov. And you can see I'm testing against a, a, a directory called test DIR, which doesn't exist by default. It doesn't exist in the checked out code base. So what we can do is create a new folder. Called test DIR. We can in here create a new file and we'll copy that file again from our failed deployment and so again if you're debugging directly um you, you still should write tests for Chekhov, and that's probably the easiest way to to test this but if you decided to start by having it in Chekhov rather than doing the uh, custom directory route, you could very easily do it this way. So you could just have a test DIR, have exactly the same manifests. Um, and then when you would then run your debugger uh, with that with that uh, 
launch.json we've just configured, um, you would in the output see um, the new rule you've created um, appear in the output. And if you really wanted to narrow it down, we could take, that's fine by the way, you will always get an exception occurred because it's the system exit exception and the debug is catching it. Um, but in reality, that's the only one that doesn't matter. So what we could do is we could say, where was our rule number Kate 152? We could go and edit our debugger launch configuration. And the benefit of doing it this way within the Chekhov code base, it, it might seem more long-winded than creating the um, than creating the external checks directory. But if you actually needed to attach a debugger easily and have all the um, variable names and things and objects easily viewable and navigatable in the debugger. By doing it within the Chekhov code base, the debugger has access to all of those. So um, you can put breakpoints wherever you want in your check and you can see what the conf structure looks like and, and kind of all that stuff if you're doing something more complicated. So what we can do here is dash dash check. CKV Kate's And then if we run this in the debugger, we should see our check come up. And there we go. Awesome. We just have hey, a one failed about VS check. Code as well. There we go. And awesome. you know, that would mean that if we really did want to say, hey debug on this breakpoint here and let Chekhov run. We'd hit that breakpoint and then we could see conf, we could see, you know, spec, we could see everything. And that might help us actually write more complex rules in the first place because we can see the Pythonic mm -hmm. dictionaries that we're actually trying to navigate through here. So, you know, that's if awesome. your brain doesn't particularly like going from Kubernetes manifest to Pythonic dictionaries, uh, yeah, that's a good way of debugging. Who's does? Who's does? That was cool. Indeed. That was good. So you went from the I'm a total beginner, I'm running a check, to you ended with I'm now an experienced um, check off rule and policy creator and debugger. Because once you have this environment set up, actually, the next one is that much easier. Right. Yeah, like zero awesome. to hero in just under an hour, right? With One with mistakes and... included. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cut out the first ten minutes of our discussing beer, and that's a let's call it fifty minutes. I mean, I feel the beer conversation is necessary to to jump yeah. into Kubernetes based security checks, but you know, that's just my personal yes. preference. Cool, that's amazing. Um, and I think if you're watching this now or in the future, and you have any questions about it. Contact us. Get okay, join our Slack, codifiedsecurity.slack.com. Any other any other calls to action we might want to have, or any passing final thoughts? Because that was a that was a long and heavily impactful office hours. I am going to put a link to our Slack in the chat. I think that is probably a good idea. Oh, I think uh, we might have a banner. How about that? Oh, look at that! Lovely. Lovely, Go there lovely, and get lovely. yourself an invite. Um, you can also do, if it's easier to remember, you can also do slack.bridgecrew.io. That will work as well. And you can just type your email address in and get an invite. Um, yeah, in closing, hmm, questions, comments. Yeah, let us know. Like, I know that a lot of people generally watch these videos. After the fact, um, I know that we snippet them because that helps a lot of community people looking for kind of certain topics and things. So if you are watching this, not real time, and you want to write some custom checks that you're struggling with, like, yeah, join our Slack, reach out on Twitter, on Twitter. Um, especially if you're going to contribute them back, the people like reviewing the pull requests are super helpful and super friendly. Um, so yeah. And I think also, Steve, once we have the PR, I'm going to raise a PR for this right now. You're going to add a check, and then we'll tweet out the PR number from Office Hours as well. So if you want to see this code and use this for your own templates, um, by all means, go ahead. And that should be a, a fully fleshed out example with the test directory as well. Amazing. 
Awesome. awesome. That was fun. That Thank was you for fun. solving my problem. Thank you for going quite gently on the nasty <laughs> ifs. It could have been a lot, lot nastier. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Uh, who knows when we'll have the next office hours, but I know we're going to have one coming up with uh, a demonstration of our new drift detection probably in the next couple of weeks, but who Ooh. knows? Oh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to I'm gonna hand the reins over to you probably on that one. Yes, very exciting. Awesome. All right. Cool. Shall we close it out? Let's close it out. This has been episode 12 of Codified Security uh, with Matt Johnson and Steve Jaguer. Still got it the wrong way around, haven't I? You're there. Me too. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. And thanks for stopping by. Thanks. <laughs>